I'm going to talk about a quite new citizen science uh, project that we're working on in Montana that we hope will bring um, awareness, more awareness and discussions of climate change effects to communities in the southwestern crown of the continent. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Bruce Riemann, also the Clearwater Resource Council, Corey Davis of the University of Montana, and Gary Burnett of the Blackfoot Challenge. These individuals and organizations are all part of the Southwest Crown of the Continent Collaborative, and that is an affiliation of organizations, industry, and um, government agencies working on landscape restoration in the one and a half million acre um, Southwest Crown of the Continent in Western Montana. So, this area outlined in yellow at the bottom of the graph. <clears throat> this uh, project, I believe, is truly collaborative, at least in the, the general sense, not just among the Southwest collaborative organizations, but we also have many partners in each community that we work in, um, from schools to nonprofit organizations, as well as state and federal agencies. Communities in the Southwest Crown depend on streams and the lakes they feed for economic, recreational, aesthetic, and natural values that are key to the vitality of these communities, their sense of place, and ways of life, from ranching and farming to floating and fishing. Changing climate conditions can have direct and um, immediate effects on streams, the amount and timing of flows, water temperatures, and associated water quality variables um, can be especially vulnerable to changes in mountain snowmelt streams. So these next few slides will show some predicted changes in stream temperatures in the U.S. Rockies with some predicted changes in um, global temperatures. I'm sorry that graph stops right at the border, um, but <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> um, the black oval shows the approximate location of the southwestern crown, and if you keep your eye on that, you can see how dramatically stream temperatures in this area are predicted to change with one, two, or three um, degree rises in atmospheric temperature. Changes in stream flows and temperatures affect fish populations, many of which are already subject to other non-climate stressors and may have some fairly narrow temperature tolerances. And changes in the amounts and timing of flows can have significant impacts on the availability of water for fish and other wildlife and also um, direct human uses, such as household uses and agricultural. Yet there's little information available to communities in the southwestern crown on the amount and quality of water in their streams and of any trends in water supply. There's a history of water quality impairment on many streams in the southwestern crown. And we've had some major lakes in valley bottoms in recent years. Um, experiencing algal blooms and heightened nutrient levels. So in response to all these factors, we've initiated a project to involve school kids and other community members in collecting data on water in streams and lakes in their own backyards. Our primary project goals, which I think pretty much reflect the three areas of the pie or slices of the pie that Jennifer talked about earlier, um, are to first engage people in assessing natural resources in their own communities with the hope that that engagement will lead to more ecologically literate citizens. To collect long-term data that um, can be useful in making natural resource management decisions 
and to promote awareness of some of the potential impacts of climate change in the region. Our project started with a stream monitoring program at the Sealy Swan High School, which is in the town of Sealy Lake, the largest community um, in the southwestern crown. So we cover a pretty large geographical area, but I'm sure like many places in Alberta, we don't have a large uh, human population. The Clearwater Resource Council was actually approached by teachers at the high school who wanted to get their students involved in a service learning project related to water in their community. So CRC scientists partnered with the teachers to help students um, collect flow and water quality data starting in 2012 on a stream that runs right through the high school campus. And that was done with funding primarily from the local community. And this year, with funding from the Kresge Foundation, we were able to expand the model used at the Sealy Swan High School to develop um, a, as of yet, small network of stream monitoring sites in and around three of the largest communities in the Southwestern Crown. <clears throat> So we partner with teachers and other community members to involve middle and high school students, that's mostly grades six through 12, in monitoring uh, streams in their area. Together, we selected streams that met a number of criteria. They were primarily fed by snow melt, um, safe and relatively easy to access, although they're not all safe for students to get in all times of the year. Um, we had landowner permission to access them. They're inhabited by native fish species, and they're of some importance or interest to the community, either used for recreation or um, irrigation, or simply an important feature of the town that they're in. And also, each stream is part of a collaborative forest um, restoration project area, which may allow us to document effects of later restoration work as well. So streams in all three communities fit these criteria, but they also um, differ significantly from one another physically, which also we hope will allow participants to make some interesting comparisons among the sites. In each stream, participants collect three primary types of data. Uh, stream flow, or the amount of water moving through the stream at any given time. Turbidity, and stream temperature. And then we also encourage and support them to collect information on any other related topics of interest, such as macroinvertebrates or fish. There are a few steps involved in estimating stream flow. Uh, the way we do it in this project are first to install a permanent gauge at the site, which water, measures water depth. And this gives participants sort of a concrete and visual connection to the data that they're collecting. And it also provides backup for the second element, um, which is to install a stilling well with data loggers in it that will continuously um, measure and record water depth throughout the year. And then participants actually get out and measure flow about eight to 10 different times throughout the year at different water levels um, using top setting rods and, and flow meters. And we develop a rating curve of known depths and, and flows so that we can then um, estimate stream flow throughout the year for all different water levels. Participants also collect water samples and measure turbidity using a turbidimeter. And the data loggers in the stilling wells record stream temperature continuously throughout the year as well. So each site um, 
has all the equipment they need to collect all those data. Students have been collecting and recording information on macroinvertebrates in the streams. And Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks has permanent fish monitoring sites at at least two of the streams so far, which allows kids to actually help um, collect and record data on fish species occurrences and population levels. Students at the Sealy Swan High School also collected samples for nutrient analyses um, for, for two years. And we had uh, community volunteers collecting samples as well in 11 other street, streams in that same watershed. Um, we used the flow data collected by the kids at the high school to model flow in these other streams, which allowed us to estimate nutrient loading in the streams. Uh, so these are streams that do, again, empty into two of the lakes that have s had significantly high nutrient levels, so we concentrated that effort and expense on those particular sites. And hoping we can actually start to get at some of the causes of a um, issue that's important to the community. An important part of the project has been to develop um, supporting curriculum with lessons that, first of all, give students and teachers background information on the, sorry, on the kinds of data that they'll be collecting and why it might be important. Along with lessons that have detailed instructions on how to collect data and how to um, analyze it. And ways to figure out what it might mean and how it might relate to other information or fit into a bigger picture. We're also working on a curriculum piece that ties directly into climate change. We plan to use a few different venues to explain the project and try to integrate the information into community discussions. So there are some ongoing programs that we can fit into. And we're also trying to figure out some new ways in some of the communities to bring it into discussion, um, and especially ways that students can present the information themselves to their own communities. And finally, I want to mention a few of the biggest challenges that we've run across. One is that it's certainly a significant time commitment, both in coordinating the project and for the teachers that are participating. Um, although much of that seems to be on the front end, what we've realized is it seems to take a couple of years for it to really get off the ground, get to the point where people are comfortable using the equipment and understand what they're doing. But it is still a lot to ask busy teachers um, to make that commitment to get out that many times a year with their students. Another is finding other adults in the community that can help support the schools in the program, help maintain the equipment, and um, go out either with the students to lend an extra hand, or even to do some of the monitoring when the students can't get out there. <clears throat> and finally, <laughs> coordinating and managing data exchange and analyses. Um, that's something we're just beginning to work on, ways that we can have the data available for everyone to look at and analyze without too much confusion. Um, so I'd be happy if, if folks here have had any suggestions or ideas for us in those. I think I'm learning a lot already at the conference on a lot of that. And I'd just like to thank our funders for their support and happy to take any questions. <laughs>